Hello and welcome to video two of the Introduction to MATLAB video series. In this video, we're going to go over the MATLAB basic commands, how to define a matrix, perform matrix algebra, create a function, go over polynomials, curve fitting, and least squares. So clicking back over to our MATLAB file, we have our null matrix that we've already created. And now we can go ahead and we can add in you use spaces or commas. We're going to have one, two, three as our first row. We have a semicolon that's going to designate the second row now after. And then our finally our third one. So we're filling in that null bracket or that null matrix. If we use a semicolon at the end, that's going to go ahead and print out the information there too. So we have as a matrix and then as essentially the list there. We can also have it, the different elements of a matrix, the number, a function, and an expression. And we can all have that stored and the results stored within a specific matrix. We can also include characters. We can also modify a matrix. So if I scroll up a little bit, Here's our X, and we've added the absolute of that first position as the fifth option, and now we have a fourth that's essentially a zero, since we have no information there. We can also do a vertical concatenation. We can also do submatrices. So we're creating an object called B, in A, one to three. So notice within A, we've essentially removed the last row. And here we're asking for columns two to three and rows three and four. We can also do horizontal concatenation, Z transposed of Z. So that's where I got that little apostrophe symbol there, and I'll transpose. We can also do some basic matrix algebra. Now I do want to mention that MATLAB is sensitive to cases, so be very cautious when you're assigning them. C is going to be the combination of A plus B. And we can also do scalar subtraction. To clear an object from the workspace, go ahead and type in clear, the object name, and then a semicolon. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new thing for X, and I'm gonna overwrite Y. Now, if we try to do multiplication here, we're gonna get an error message that matrix does not match. So we, or the matrix, or the dimensions do not match. So what we can do is we can do x times y, apostrophe to do a dot and a product and return a scalar. We can also do a dot, comma x comma y, and parentheses. So we return the same thing, or as a matrix. We can also do a scalar product. So let's go ahead and clear A, uppercase A, lowercase b, and x. We're gonna go ahead and assign A and assign B. So we're gonna take the inverse of A times B for left division. We can also do B times inverse of A, right division. And notice how these are different. We can also do matrix power. So I'm gonna clear lowercase a. I'm gonna go ahead and assign, raise the null to the second power. And you can also do this element wise operation using a dot operator. We can also do, let me clear this out, an array operation for element by element. So we can do multiplication and division. 
using left division or right division. For example, two divided by five, five using a left division, and two divided by five using left division. We can also do matrix power. And we can also do some special matrices. So I'm going to go ahead and assign the matrices. We can always do ones with two. This will be a, a two by two, all of ones. We can do ones and then specify the number of rows as three and columns as two. And ones, that's the size of A, which is a three by three matrix. We can do the same thing, but use a zeros function and do the same thing. Using the I function, it's going to go ahead on the off diagonal be zeros, on the diagonal it's going to be a one. And we can go ahead and specify that as well. We can do things like create a random number using two. Now create a two by two matrix of random numbers or we can specify the numbers of rows and columns. We can do rand, rand n as another option too. One thing you might wanna do is as you're running MATLAB code is determine the efficiency of the algorithms. We can use format to format the option with def default settings. And I'm gonna go ahead and put d equals pi. So if we look at lowercase d, 3.16. And then we can go ahead and we can execute time. So if we start with a tick, semicolon, the function we want to run, semicolon, talk, and semicolon, that's going to, to essentially do a start and stop for a stopwatch and let you know how long has elapsed from start to finish. This is a really good thing for efficiency. And also do some benchmark testing. Note that if you're doing this on the high performance computer, uh, just be cautious with this because this might be opening up a separate TXT file to record this as part of the output if you're using batch submission. We can also do, so we can kind of compare. And right now we're gonna actually plot and show, and create a plot within that. It takes a little bit longer, but still we're talking less than a second. Let's go ahead and do some simple math functions. We'll take the absolute of two, exponentiate one, take the square root of four, exponentiate one and take the log of it. So it's just gonna cancel out and be one, log of three, log 10 of three. And we can also clear and then assign, clear X and then assign X. We can raise X to the nearest integer, we went from 1.8, negative 3, 3.3, and so forth. We can also drop the decimals, and we can get remainders. We can do sine. So if it's a positive one, it's gonna be a plus. If it's a negative one, it's gonna be a minus, and zero for zero. We go ahead and use the sine for a radian cosine, and tan. For matrix manipulations, let's go ahead and clear x, y, and z. We'll sign x for a row vector. Row vector with a specific, so it's going from one to five in line two to seven. If we use x, or sorry, y equals zero colon zero point five to three, it's gonna start with a zero. The last one's gonna be up to a three, and it's go increments of 0.5. So we had we start with a five, and with a negative five and z, with increments of minus one. We can also take a column vector and transpose vector row. We can create y by a formula. In a matrix of x and y. So one, if we plug into the equation. We're saving the output here and creating a matrix of that. Let's go ahead and clear those. 
we go ahead and assign A. And for one and one in the placements, we're saying return the value of A, in matrix A, row one, column one. We can also redefine and change the values there. We can also do some submatrix work. So we're going to create an n by n matrix of random integers from one to the square root of n. We can go ahead and do some things with different parts of the submatrix. Call on the columns, call on specific rows, and combinations of those as well. We can also go ahead, I'm going to overwrite these, and we can do some matrix manipulations. So we can switch the elements of C by elements of B. So these elements we're going to switch the ones in C to. We can also reverse order the rows in C. Let me go ahead and move this up a little bit so we can see this a little bit more clearly. So we've switched it around. So the first row, it's now the last row. We can also vectorize and reshape. So to vectorize, we're going to go ahead and make a vector using the columns. One, two, three, four. We can also reshape the matrix using a vector. Let's go ahead and clear that. I'm going to assign A. If we want to flip left to right, and we can also flip the matrix upside down. Let's go ahead and create a two row by three column matrix. We're going to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise and rotate 90 degrees two times. We can also reshape to be rather than two columns, three rows to two rows and three columns. There's also relation operators too. So if you want to use less than, it's going to be simple, less than symbol, less than or equal to, greater than, greater or equal to, if it's exactly equal to be an equal equal, or is not equal is a tilde equal sign. So I'm going to go ahead and click on, and clear A. I'll just use a magic three to generate a matrix. And then for A is greater than or equal to five. If it's a zero, it's going to be not equal to. If it's a one, it is greater or equal to five. We can also use find elements greater than or equal to three and assign those to an element or a vector called K. We can also replace with elements with five. Let's go ahead and clear X and we're going to assign it. If X is greater than five. It's going to be a logical array. One, it is greater than zero, it is not. We can also take if it's greater than, or sorry, if it's equal, or sorry, greater than equal, greater than five, and X is less than nine. So using those two conditions, we can also use a negate symbol. So it, it, it's not equal to or if it's not meeting that condition. We can also use any, all, or X, O, R. So any is gonna return one if there's any non-zero elements in X. All, it returns one if all elements in X are non-zero. And X, or is gonna compare each pair and return one if one is zero and the other is non-zero. That's, if it's non-zero, it's gonna be a zero otherwise. We also have more relation logical operators. Find, exist, is na, is infinite, is finite, is empty, is a string, is a global variable, and is a sparse matrix. So we can actually go ahead and also do some set operators. Let's go ahead and clear A and B. Let's go ahead and create some random matrices for A and B and test if they are equal. We test equality of the matrix element by element. Based on this, they are not equal. But A to A, it is equal. We can also look at unique. So within this series, only list the unique elements. 
and we can also use is a member. So is a member, it will return one if the element is a member of, if A is also a member of B. And is there any amounts in B that is also a member of A? We can also do unions. What is the union of A and B? What is the union of B and A? We can also do what is the intersection of A and B? We can set difference. So set difference of A minus B or B minus A. MATLAB can also handle strings. So we're going to create a variable string or a variable called X and call, put in the string how to handle character strings. We can ask what is the size? So what is the length of the strings? Whose? It's going to list all the variables in the workspace is whose. We can say u equals the double of x. It's going to return an ASCII code value. And care u is going to translate ASCII it goes back into characters. We can say, okay, what is between 15 and 23? Then we have character. And we can also flip that and put it backwards. We can find strings. So if our string is American, we can go ahead and say find within object B, find R within that in the position, and find the position or location of N. We're going to switch gears now and do some polynomials. So we're going to clear the entire workspace. And we use a coefficient vector, the row, representing a polynomial. We're going to solve the equation and take the polynomial with roots in R. We can also do some convolution using the convolution function of A and B. Oops, I did not run B. There we go. We can also do addition and division. We'll use a deconvolution. Q is the quotient, R is the remainder. We can also do some derivatives. So we'll use a polynomial de derivative here. We can do some evaluation, line space. And now we're going to use a polynomial evaluation of P and X. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and highlight plot to table. So I plot title x lab and we'll run that that's going to put the tech equation on our graph so now we can actually plot and see what that looks like that opened up in a separate window we can also do some curve fitting so to clear x and y go ahead and generate x y and n now i'm going to do a poly fit of x y and n this is what the equation is going to look like I'm going to go ahead and do line space in poly eval. And now I'm going to go ahead and plot this. In a new window, we have a second order curve fitting. We can also do a tenth order curve fitting. So I'm going to specify that here. Now we have the answers for that. And I'm going to go ahead and run this. And now we have our second in our 10th order curve fitting visual. Finally, let's go ahead and do some least squares. I'm gonna close and clear. Our x is gonna be a sequence of one to nine. Here is our y, and we have our xp. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead for k one to four, polyfit, we're gonna use this function And now I'm gonna go ahead and do some subplots. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this first one. And so we're using subplots, we're saying, okay, it's gonna be a two by two. This is our first plot here, our first degree. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all 
of these. And I'm going to bring back the plot. So now we have our first degree, second degree, third degree, and fourth degree. I'm going to go ahead and print those out for J. And I'm going to go ahead and clear those. And we're going to go ahead and do this. We'll talk about a little bit about the interpolation features. So we're going to use one dimensional data and use some different methods. So we have our data now. We can go ahead and do a linear, linear interpolation. We're going to do a piecewise cubic. So we have our variables. I'm changing this around a little bit to specify that. And we're going to go ahead and put the information there. So now we have our piecewise cubic. We can also do our spline. We can also ch uh, click on the image and we can remove, we can also scale these around. We can go ahead and save this if we wanted to, and we can save it as a MATLAB figure or as a JPEG or a PNG. And there's some other features too for editing. We can insert some different labels, add a legend, add a title, color bar. So we can really customize this if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and do some two-dimensional data. So I'm gonna use the default for linear. And let's go ahead and we're gonna take our initial mesh. So my mesh, I'm gonna go ahead and use hold on. Can I put this on? And when we do this, we switch back over, we've now overlaid the two graphs. And we can actually, by clicking on this and holding it down, we can actually, one, get the, the specific coordinate of the dot we have. And by holding the mouse down and rotating it, we can actually rotate it in three-dimensional space. Go ahead and do some spline. And if we double click, we can pull up the specific variable information to this. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and go back to our syntax. Ready to run that. So I'm gonna go ahead and run all of this. Oops, went too far. There we go. And so now we have our spline. So we have a linear line, linear line, linear line there. Let's go ahead and clear all this out. We're going to actually stop here. In the next video, we're going to talk about some file management. Thank you and look forward to seeing you at the next video.